everyone. Hi Rachel, hi Juliana, Cecilia. Hi. Hi from London. Hi California. Is it Jamie? Nice to see you. Hello, hello. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Hi Ella. Hi Canada. <laughs> We've got Canada, California, where's everyone calling in from today? Milano. Ciao. Hi, Marta. Okay, let's go. Sorry, I didn't see that, Paul. <clears throat> Hi. <laughs> you were so quick, I must have missed you. I think I was on first. <laughs> <laughs> Beat me to it. <laughs> How you doing, Paul? Yeah, good. How are you? Good, good, good. You've been a busy man. <laughs> oh, you know, I, 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 our baker's just down, just around the corner. Yeah, She's a friend of mine, and she was like, "Oh, I need some help." And you know, I've, I've been having some, some issues, just sort of getting creative. Mm. Um, and I, I said to Tim, "Oh, I, I'm just going to go and help Jackie," and he was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> I sort of, I was like, oh, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, and and then I, and I thought I was only going to be there for two hours. And Tim said, come for lunch, and it was three thirty. Oh. And I, I, as I was leaving, she, her husband, Jackie's husband, called and he said, okay, so I'll come in and help with this and help with this. And she said, done, oh, done, all, done, all of it. She said, oh, he's so so organized, it's it's amazing. And then I, the I, story like, you I come mind. home and I bake my focaccia, and Tim's like, oh my. God, how much <laughs> bread! <laughs> but it, it came out really good. So good with a bit of um, balsamic, huh? So oh, it was so lovely, so yeah. lovely. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. I don't know how you're doing all this cooking as well as all the all the content that you're creating. It's it's very impressive. You don't sleep. Well, you know, I'm I'm really lucky because I have Telmo and oh, I just see Tolga. Come on, hey Tolga. Um, I, I you know I I I talk to Telmo nearly every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and we talk about the process and we sort of banter quite a lot about um, how something works and, mm -hmm. and, you know, really sort of minutia that, hey, Saron, that a lot of people don't, don't think about. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, one of, the, one of the issues that I was having was, you know, I, I would go to teach a class and the class wouldn't, the students would never, ever finish what you want them to finish. And they would get frustrated and I would get frustrated. So I started asking other teachers, you know, do you find that your students are actually meeting their expectations? And they said, no, they never finish what I want them to finish. So I started looking at this and I started wondering, why, are the, what are we missing? And I know for a fact that, you know, I, I, when I teach, I always tell my students, you know, I started teaching saying, you need to sit correctly, you need to know where the page is, you need to know where the pen is in your hand. And, um, and, and I would spend three hours of a two day, you know, because my classes are 9.30 to 5.30 mm -hmm. on a Saturday and Sunday. So I have 14 hours, but I would still spend two, three hours teaching them how to sit, you know, how to lean, how to breathe, where the papers, and, and so, you know, I, I could never get through the class. Yeah. So I set up these three prerequisites on, uh, on, on YouTube, three videos which are free, you know, and so many people have said how it has changed the way they write yeah. because their posture's better, they can write for longer, and so I, I've been help to, to film, and um, hey, Miles, um, and we set it up in the kitchen. We went through, you know, the posture and, you know, the posture video was 35 minutes. Mm. The placement video was two hours and 10 minutes. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's broken down. You know, if you're doing yeah. a copper plate on a flat desk, yeah. um, where, does the, where does the page sit? And if you're doing italic on a flat desk, where does that page sit? Because they don't sit in the same place. Mm. If you're doing textualis on a flat desk. And so we, we, we did all of those on the flat desk, sitting. So, you know, first I looked at the posture. Next, I looked at the placement of the page. And then I looked at the page on an angled desk. Because, of course, the angle of the desk changes as well. So, you know, if you're working on things like 
Textualis or Fracteur mm -hmm. or Batard or Rotunda, mm -hmm. the desk really should be at about, 40, at about 60 degrees. Oh, uh, right, okay. And as soon as you go into the Renaissance period, the desk needs to drop down to 45. Mm -hmm. And if you're working at scripts like the Ronde, uh, the Ronde is written at about 30 degrees. And if you're working on a copper plate, the desk needs to be at 10 degrees or flat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I talk through all of these different mm -hmm. things. And, you know, even Tim said to me at the end of filming, you know, all of these prerequisites, he said, yeah. you do this every day when you sit down at work? Yeah, I, <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, I have to do all of it. Um, so those videos are up, which has been, which, which I'm really glad because, it, you know, people are at home now. Yeah. And they could really take the time to sit and study with the videos and study with the script. Okay, so now I understand why the script isn't working. So I've yeah. done the posture, the position, the placement. I've done my hold, which I'll talk a little bit about when I'm That's going fine. through the training wheels. Yeah. Because my hold is, you know, I, you know I, I suffer with a lot of pain in my hands mm. from repetitive strain injury, from, you know, 30 years of writing for crazy fashion houses. Mm. Yeah. Expecting work yesterday when your list isn't even here. <laughs> keep going, keep going, Paul. Uh, uh, and you know, it, 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 nobody taught me how to hold a pen. Mm. So I, I caused a lot of damage to my hands because of this hold. So you know, the doctor actually, the doctor said, you know, if you, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't do something about this, you won't be able to write in two years' time. Mm. And this was six years ago. Yeah. And so I developed this hold. I was holding the tool. And every time I could feel pain, I would make a note. Mm. So I started to work out how to hold the tool without suffering. And it then made me realize that, you know, maybe teaching people this hold is really important because my hold gives me, gives anybody who learns it so much more dexterity. You know, when you're doing an F, People do an F and they sort of have to stop halfway down the F to lift their hand because mm -hmm. they don't have enough space to make yeah. the shape. Exactly. This hold completely negates all of that. Okay. And then, of course, I also want to teach people my version of muscular movement, which is, again, easier to learn than historical muscular movement. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now that those are done, um, I'm yeah. very, very excited that people can really study with them. Yeah. Um, and I think, and, you know, the, the training wheels are based around these five pre uh, pre -re these Pre basic prerequisites yeah. yeah because you know if you if you don't know how to sit you won't be able to produce the kinds of lines that you want to do so you know when you when you're holding a pen like this mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're you're doing this right that's way more work so of, you know people hold a pen like this and they sort of mm -hmm. do this that's way more work than your fingers are meant to do that causes that will cause a lot of damage to the tendons. But also, you have no scope of mobility because you, that, that's it. Gotcha. Now, my, my hold is a steeper hold, much higher up, and it gives you all of this. And if you're using muscular movement as well, you, you can do really big work. So Is everyone doing with us i hope so get your pencils come on <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll send it to you to look at so um so yeah so that you know all of those you know once you've studied those you know yeah. you will find all of your calligraphy will change yeah uh, absolutely uh, and I, I was just going to go back to the point that you made about the everyone being at home they've got time to kind of really go back into the depths of what they might have missed in the in the process of learning and i personally have picked up two key things that i just it just went by the wayside in my learning. And I'm like, how did I miss this? But I did. So it's so wonderful to be able to go back and that you've created these things to give people a fresh approach. And you do say that in your paperwork, that this is unlike anything you've done before for this, <clears throat> excuse me, for these exercises, for the training wheels, and just to stick with it, that it's something that you won't be used to. It's un unfamiliar, but to stick with it. So I can, you know, it's a complete refresh. And you know, tell me when I set this up and I, I... You know, Tim and I talked about this and Tim said, and I, I spoke to it, you know, with Max at Lettering Daily and with Milan. And Max and Milan said, this, this is too cheap. <laughs> You're selling this too little because this is so, so much cool. information and it's really important information. And I said, listen, you know, there's, 
there's, there's a scaling structure that I want to look at. So I want people to have access to these videos because I know it will change them. I know they won't suffer, you know, Max. Um, I know they won't suffer because, and Max, Ma I mean, Max at Lettering Daily, I sent them to Max and Max started working through them systematically. Mm -hmm. And he called me and he said, this is insane. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't believe how much is changing. Just, yeah. you know, I, I can see the changes immediately as I, I start working with them. So, you know, because people are in, in lockdown, I thought, okay, let's, let's do a bundle. So, you know, go, you go to Shopify and you go to the collection and, you know, there's five prerequisites to go through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're like five pounds, 10 pounds, 15 pounds, 10 pounds. And if you buy all of them, you get them for 20 pounds, right? Yeah. So five and a half hours of, of information. Yeah. yeah. Um, just wouldn't... so that people can work with them. And, you know, and, and Tim and I talked about it and Max and I talked about it. And Max, you, you might need to raise it afterwards. And I said, I said, no, I, 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 I'm really struggling with this because they have to be kept at a, at a low enough cost so that everyone can afford it and everyone can study with it. Mm. because you know they are basic things you know that's it's it's, it's the same reason I, I took 16 pages out of the out of the copper plate manual mm. because i feel that they're things that as, as 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 educators we have to give people we have to let them have this information mm. otherwise they just won't blossom properly and they won't learn efficiently and effectively and well they and won't they won't want to keep learning no, and, and, and they'll, they'll struggle, you know, so many people reach a plateau and, and they, you know, the calligraphy is like this, you know, you, you have this plateau is your brain. And then this, 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 this uh, hill is your brain. And this hill is your hand. Yeah. So your brain gets to the plateau before your hand does. And then you're <laughs> like, oh, this book is terrible because yeah. your hand can't produce what your brain is seeing. Mm. And then eventually the hand catches up. And yeah. the, the brain is like, oh, okay, so thanks for reaching the plateau. We'll start <laughs> climbing again, right? Yeah. And you're always sort of lagging. But, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel. All of this information, you know, people need access to this. So anyway. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, a shop of for those. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. That's okay. So... Uh, did you have a chance to download the training wheel? Of course I have. I've looked through. I would say I've not graduated yet from exercise one. My question was, um, with regards to this, was since you've, since you've launched the training wheels, I guess that what the motivation was specifically for this particular um, to training wheels, and I know this is only part one, um, but also what's the key feedback since launching this that you've had to give to people? Um, you know, is it, is it, are you kind of saying the same thing over and over now that you're seeing people working through it? Is it so, I think one of the, one of the things that, you know, for those of you who've downloaded the training wheels, you know, there's, there is text at the front. And, you know, I, I said this, you know, uh, uh, maybe about when I was doing my lives. Just so everyone I, um, can see, this is what we're talking about. It's not backwards, it probably is, isn't it? Are we both backwards? Yeah, it probably is. We'll, <laughs> we'll, flip, the, we'll flip the camera around in a sec. Yeah. That's you fine. know, I, I was talking to some people. I was talking in my lives about my copper plate script manual, which I did a week of. And people would ask questions and I, and I would say, you, what's your name? Right. You, did you read the manual? And they go, no. <laughs> and, oh, you know, I know there is a lot of text. And, you know, the problem is calligraphers don't want to read it. They want to write so they flip, yeah. to the, they flip to the images and they start practicing, but <laughs> they've not taken the time to read what is, is in the manual. So I, I always tell people, you know what, read it first. I've spent the time to think through what you need, to, to, yeah. what you need in your brain. Mm -hmm. I've spent that time thinking through it so that when you're reading it, you're sort of sitting there going, oh, I, I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. And so by reading it, I say, read it first watch the video, go back and read it with a highlighter, highlight things that you're struggling with, and then watch the video again. <coughs> Make notes, because 
Then you start asking questions. Now, the other thing that I did was I thought, okay, so I know people are going to struggle because it's looking at the script in a way that most people would never have thought about looking at it because they're not accustomed to thinking about minutia because they're not accustomed to thinking because they're so busy writing. Yeah. And, you know, I think this is such a flaw for calligraphers, you know. I know we want to write, but 80% of calligraphy is thinking. If you solve all the problems with the ink and the paper and the nibs, all of that's thinking. If you solve all of those problems, you can spend the 20% enjoying the writing. Mm. So I set up a group, uh, I set up an album in my calligraphy classes group on Facebook. Yes. And so that link is in the PDF. You yes. go to the link and then you post the work in the album. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so we should say that the support for this PDF, it's not just that you get the PDF, that people can actually post and you are regularly looking in the um, PA Scribe calligraphy classes uh, group on Facebook and people can post in there and get your feedback, which is amazing. But, you know, I, I'm also trying to get people to understand that they can't just post in the, in the, in the main discussion page. Mm. They have to post in that album because, you know, when other people come to the group, they it's easy to, to find things. And, you know, there's, there's like 25 albums in the group, but right? <laughs> well, at least they're in a group. They're kind of in an album. And so, you know, you post the work, but the biggest, you know, there is a video in there and you watch the video, it, teach, it, it goes through the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and one of the biggest issues is people are just jumping onto it and practicing without reading it and without even watching the video. Mm -hmm. Then I said, I would say, did you watch the video? And they go, I'll go and watch it now. <laughs> and then, yes, and yes. then they come back and I, I see a message in my, in, my, in, in my messages going, yes, thank you. I watched the video and I feel like a fool because you've answered all the questions in the video. Uh, really, really sorry. I will go and rewatch the video again. <laughs> and then they watch it again and they come back and go, yes, learn more. So I will watch the video again. And, and it's, just, it's just getting people to, to be responsible for their own learning. Mm -hmm. You know, I think so often, you know, we, we can send a message to somebody. Mm -hmm. So we don't spend the time thinking, you know, you're like, oh, where is this? And you're like, okay, it's, it's right there on page one, paragraph one. Yeah. You clearly didn't read it. Go back and read it. They're like, <laughs> I, I, and they're like, oh, but you could just answer it. I'm like, if you haven't read paragraph one, you haven't read paragraph two, three or four, please go and read the information. And it's, it's really important because the information is there. It's there to help you. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the biggest issues people are having with is that straight line. Oh, yeah. Because you, you, you know how a pencil works, right? Mm -hmm. Or you think you know how it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know that you can make a straight line. And you know you can make a line on 55 because you, you have a grid of lines to follow, right? I'm not asking you to work between the boxes there. I'm asking you to work on the lines. And you do the exercise and you look at the line and it's like you gave it to a child to do. And you're like, oh, this is terrible. Yeah. I, I could not have done this. What's going on? And, and so you start to think. What's, what's actually going on here? What are you really struggling with? Why are these lines so bad? And you know, it's, it's not even, I could say, oh, those are nice. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh, these are terrible. What happened? Did your toes? <laughs> and people are like, I can't believe I, I, I did the lines and, and they were terrible. And I'm like, okay, so, I know. so good. I'm glad they're terrible, but why are they terrible? You know, it, it's not it, it's not about the lines being bad. It's about it's about looking at them afterwards. Mm. And you know, I, I always say to people, I know you want to write, do a line of lines, do them in groups of five. So you do five, you leave a space. You do five, you leave a space because if you do a sixth line, you're reinforcing what you've done in the five lines. Mm -hmm. Now, I say to people, take a reading pen and correct circle and dots and all kinds of things with arrows and that kind of thing mm -hmm. and a lot of people you know you look at people's practice and there's no correction marks so you ask them did you correct the work oh i, I know what i know what the problems are in my head i'm like okay so you you know you can remember 30 problems 
if you write down those problems, lines aren't straight, lines not touching the X height and the mm -hmm. baseline, starting heavy, finishing light, lifting off at the bottom, lines not even, lines not on foot. You could then say, okay, so let's take the first problem. So the first problem is I'm not on the 55. So how do you correct that? So of course, the placement video in the, prereq in the prerequisite solves all of that. Because if your lines aren't on 55, chances are your thumb is probably in the way, so you're not seeing where the line is finishing. Mm -hmm. Or the page might be too far away. So all of this I look at in, in, the, in the placement videos. You know, what, why can't you see what you're doing? You know, you sit in there writing, and your neck is like this, and you're writing. And you finish, you finish your practice, and you're like, oh, my shoulders and my neck. That, that should never happen. You know, if, if you are suffering, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. If you are in pain while you're doing calligraphy, something is wrong. So by solving that, you know, and you get into a comfortable position, you get all of that done. So, so people who have watched the prerequisites and are doing the, the, the training wheels have said to me, e everything has changed. My straight lines are better. I have more control over the pencil. Um, and of course, the next problem is, can you control the pencil? So how, you know, when I write a lot with a, when I write with a pencil, I test the pencil first on a separate, on, on the top of the page and I go, right, so this pencil can produce this line, heavy, and these intervening lines at different weights until I get absolutely light. So I've tested the pencil. Most people pick up a pencil and they just start writing. So they don't know what the darkest line is and they don't know what the lightest line is. So you, you have to figure that out. Now, I've, I've given lots of ideas for you know, which pencils to use. I also tell people to start mm. with a 4H pencil because yeah. most people press too hard as it is. So if you're working with an HB, you're going to end up with, um, with a really, really heavy, thick, black line. Okay, it's sort of cycling through there. Um, so, so learning about the pencil is really important. Did you, did you catch all of that? Or were you, were you, I saw your, your sort of little circle. <laughs> oh. I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? You can't hear me. You can't hear me. Do you want to try again? Okay. We're back. Hi. Hi. Uh, where I got to, you were talking about the 4-H and being able to determine the weight of the pencil or the lines that you could create with a pencil and that people weren't doing that. Um, I'm sure that people heard a bit more than that, but that's probably where I, I lost you. Okay, so I was saying, you know, when you get a pencil, when you pick up a pencil, you know, the first thing people do is they start writing. And it's, this is like any tool, you know, you, you, the, the last thing you want to do is write your name. <laughs> 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 because you know the first thing most people do is they write their name or they write the name of a friend or something yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you just like oh look what i can do <laughs> but you know the the first thing you should do with a tool is test it what mm. can the tool produce can it produce a a, a, a very heavy line mm -hmm. can it produce a very very light line can it produce a range of marks in between that. When does the tip break? Because you know, you sharpen it till it's so sharp. Well, when I sharpen the pencil, I sharpen it to that and I press it on the edge of the page and it cracks. And the tip that breaks off, I know that I would never be able to write properly with that. Okay. So you've, I've tested the pencil and I've, I've gotten it to the point where it's working. I also keep a piece of uh, sandpaper next to me because I, I, I sharpen it on the sandpaper rather than sharpening it back with the tip. So, 
you know, once you sort of worked out all of that, the next thing to work out is how do you approach the sort of the, 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 the training wheels? Yeah. So, you know, obviously go through the important information, go through the tools and materials and sort of look at what you have. Because, you know, one of the other problems I encountered was lots of people said they didn't have access to some of the pencils that I was mentioning because they were at home. Some of them were still ordering them, so that was fine. Um, but, you know, you can start these training wheels exercises with anything. Yeah. Um, and then I look at the practice. You know, I said, you know, look at all the sheets you've downloaded. Tell me when I've decided to do this in two stages. So I didn't want people to rush the, um, the process. That's yeah. why I've split it into two parts. Um, and then, I you do, know, the... I do love that you say, if you feel you're ready for the second set, that will immediately tell you that you are not ready. <laughs> Take it slowly, friends. Take it slowly. Because, you know, if, if you, if you, you know, and I, and I, I'm looking at the people in the group, in my group on Facebook, starting off and they're doing stuff. And I, I go in and I go, really? You really thought that you were good enough to move to this exercise? Look at this and look at this and look at this and look at this. Look at this and look at this. And they go, okay, I'll go back to exercise one. <laughs> and they go back and they watch the video and they reread everything and they come back and they go, how did I think I was good enough for this? And I'm like, you have to become so critical of your work because you're so unaccustomed to it. And, you know, lots of people on Instagram, lots of people post work. And what they see is the comments from people going, oh, that's really beautiful. That's so wonderful. But nobody's really sitting them down and going, okay, that's, that's really nice what you've done. But have you looked at this? And, and look at what you've done, right? So the lines aren't, aren't straight and this isn't working, that isn't. And, you know, it's, 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 it's not about being cruel to people practicing. It's about, you know, it's about helping them to become responsible for their own practice. Mm. You know, how do you get people to really look at their work? And, you know, I always say to people, listen, if you're happy with this, then I'm happy for you. But if your aim is to improve, then you have a lot more work to do. Try doing this, look at this, look at this, look at that. Okay, so, um, so you know, my, my, the re you asked me about the reason for, for, set yeah. for, for doing this. You know, my, 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 um, the reason that I wanted to do this was because, you know, I get lots of comments from people. And what I do is I look at the comments and I make notes. And if I see a comment coming up consistently, I start to ask myself, so why is this comment? Why, why are people asking this? So some of the questions. How do you write so lightly? How are your hairlines so light? Mm -hmm. How does your script have so much life to it? How is it when you write, your script looks like it's printed? Now, that immediately suggests that people are equating the printing of the, the, the writing of the script to the consistency in a font. And then comes the next question. How is it your spacing is always spot on? Mm -hmm. So I started to think, why are people struggling with this? Now, when I write copper plate script, because I built this fourfold symmetry, which I used in the manual, I started to see a, a, an underlying geometry to the structure of the script. When I write copper plate script, I come, I go up on the 55, mm -hmm. I come down, I go around a little circumference of a circle, I go up on the 55, and if I'm doing um, a swelled stroke, which is an indirect approach, because there are two approaches. One, this is the direct approach when the ligature goes into the stroke, mm -hmm. and an indirect approach is when it goes up and over and around and down. So these, these are both words used by English writing masters in the you know, 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries. Mm -hmm. So I started to realize when people do copper plate script, they come down and they go around and across. Because they don't, they don't come down and go, oh, I'm approaching the baseline. I'm going to slow down so the tines close. I'm going to touch the baseline. I'm going to go up and around and up at 55. So they come down and they go across well, if you come down and go across, what angle are you intersecting the, the baseline at? And once you're leaving the baseline, 
What, what is that angle that you're leaving the baseline at? And how does, how does that exit ligature connect with the letter? Yeah. And if you're doing that, are you doing it all the time? Or is it haphazard? And if it's haphazard, you'll never ever get evenness in the script because you're not leaving the baseline at the same angle and you're not meeting the next letter at the same angle. So, you know, you know, you know I had a, a really busy practice for like 20 years. I did, you know, millions, honestly, millions of envelopes. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that I really excelled at was centering text on a place card, which is a nightmare. Yes. <laughs> but it's a nightmare if your spacing's bad. If every time you wrote the letter A, it's the same shape, it's the same width. So every time you have a connector between those, between that letter and the next letter, every time that ligature space is made, if it's the same, then your centering is, is, is amazing. Mm. Your spacing is amazing. And, and that's what I wanted to get across in, in the training wheels. I wanted people to have a very, very simplistic approach to the structure of the writing. Mm. I'm going to flip the screen around. Okay. So I have the light on sort of full lamp. I might need to, oh, is that, is that fine? Yes. Is that quite, yeah. okay. So, so that's the copper plate script training wheels for those of you who haven't seen it. Which is so available. this is a free PDF. Um, some information, let's get this out of the way. Materials, tools and practice. Right. So this is the um, this is the first page, which looks at different exercises. Now, one of the things I tell students is, be really conscious of the exercises because each exercise is a page. You know, I don't want you to do this this as a page of practice. I want a page of this, a page of this, a page of this, a page of this. Um, and, 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 there is, and the video really helps you to understand how that works. So I'm just going to, mm -hmm. so these are, these are some of the sheets. So it shows you, now just remember, this is a, um, this is a first stage understanding. The second Sorry, stage just, really just teaches. Before you um, continue, I didn't make the announcement at the beginning, but there's people having problems with the comments being over your, work so if people tap their screen it will drop the comments down so that they can uh just it reduces down to one so that you can see what paul's looking at there without all the comments on top sorry so th the thing to remember is this is only stage one the aim of this of stage one is to teach you to go up around the circumference and down or down around the circumference and up but when you look at how the letters work as, a, as an alphabetic structure, you, you start to see some sort of inconsistencies in the spacing. Don't worry about it in part one. This is just to teach you how to come down and look at, if you look at this spacing, you know, it, it looks, it's very even, but you know, that, that sort of changes a little bit as we move into, the, into part two. Mm -hmm. um, we next look at making the letters using this particular kind of um, spacing structure. Um, and I look at where the weight changes. So these little dash marks tell you where to put weight on. And by pressing here and releasing mm -hmm. and pressing here and releasing and going up and around and pressing at the top and releasing all of these little pressing points slow you down so that it's helping you to anticipate the curve. Now, the curve is based around this circumference. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, so the curve is based around this circumference shape that Telmo and I have developed, which we have a, a baseline where am I? Oh, here we go. We have a baseline. 
and X height, bless you. Uh, ascender line and a descender line. But we always ask people to start with this aspect of it. So this is the X height line only. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is we've done a, you know, this is the grubbiest one I have, but it's the one I seem to love the most. <laughs> Um, we've done this, which is, you know, the X height. Yeah. And this X height is related to the X height that uh, we designed for the Rodia pad. Yes, I do want to talk to, about that a bit later as well, if you can. Okay. Thank you. So, you know, this X height, you know, I, I wanted the, 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 the training wheels to help people once, they, once the pads are out. Now, you can see that this fits into that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to swap this over and we're going to look at how this works. So the aim is to get you to do to get you to go so that's where the straight line intersects the circumference. Can you see that? Yeah. And so you're going around the circumference coming down on a straight line just as the straight line intersects the circumference there, you come down and around the circumference, touching the baseline, around, straight up, up and around and around and straight down and around. And so that, that's the sort of premise behind the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you work, and I'm just going to, ghosted first mm -hmm. and I'm going to inhale on the upstroke and exhale on the downstroke we'll do that together <clears throat> so it's it's really slow because copper plate script is not fast. That's about four seconds on the inhale and exhale there each. And, and, and so, you know, you're, you're inhaling here. Yeah. You're sort of holding the air there to there. So it's like, you know, a third of the, the circumference. Mm -hmm. And you're exhaling here. And then you are... In, you're holding the air there to there and you're inhaling from uh, from about here so it's sort of half of the circumference because of course this is shorter and that's longer now when you start applying pressure to it you get and up press and up and press and around and press and press Press and up. So that, that's starting to slow you down. So, so when, you, you know, when you come to writing things, you know, you can write... Where is that line? So I tell you to go up and around the circumference and down and around and up and around and down down and up and around and down and up and around and around so that's that immediately sorts out your spacing it doesn't just sort sort out the, the spacing between the letters it also sorts out the internal spacing of the letter itself so now that's just, you know, how part one works. Yeah. Of course, when you move to part two, which we have yet to release, mm -hmm. you would go one and you would do a half. Gotcha. But of course, you know, part two actually has these grids halved, so it does help you with this. But, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the, the aim of part one, because in part two, you have to come down and around and up but it's more difficult to do this in half a space 
unless you've trained to do it in a whole space. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's all about incremental learning because mm. once you understand how it works as a, you know, as a writing structure, you can then really start implementing it. So I'm going to write a little bit here so you can see mm. that. Let me zoom out a little bit. may just need to, if you can move it up a little bit, that would be great. Just to the bottom. Yeah, thank you. So already you're starting to see the internal space of the letter working. So I'm, I'm not connecting them because mm -hmm. I'm just using the structure, the, the teaching structure to help you get a better understanding of the, the, the sort of internal sense. space of the letter. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, when you start writing, you would get something like, and a half, and the R is a half. And a half, and the H is a half at the top, and a half at the bottom. So it's a half, and the Y would go there. So by, by seeing the writing, you know, I, I know you're working with a pencil, which is what I asked for. But as soon as you start to see the writing, you start to go, well, look, look at the spacing. Yeah. Now, look at the internal spacing here, 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 here. And all of it is on the 55. All of it. They are all on that 55. Yeah. So you're coming down and around and up. And of course, lots of people do this. They, they press and they come out like that. Or they come down and they go across. And I want you to come up, no pressure, press, release. So look, this, all of this, the two thirds is the where the weight is. The sixth is where you're playing with the weight at the top and the bottom. So this is a tapered area and that's the tapered area. Most people come around and they do this, and then they do that. And by teaching them to go up and around, no pressure, press, release and around, you end up with that. So, so the script starts to, to really help itself to, to structure itself. And I, I'm guessing, I mean, it's an obvious question, I suppose, but I thought I'd just ask it, is that, the, the, the purpose of the, the grids that you've designed, um, I guess would be impractical. Well, what am I trying to say? Um, that, that you're teaching muscle memory with this. It's that they, you know, people get to use these grids to then create that muscle memory that they can take into their script wherever it goes. Yes. Um, and you know, the, the thing is part one really works with the size of this grid. Mm -hmm. which I know is a little wide. You know, somebody sent me a message saying, oh, I find the letters really big. You know, so many pr people practice small. Yeah. When you practice small, you don't see the mistakes because they're hidden in this tiny little area that you're playing with. Yeah. You know, if you practice small, you can't then practice big. You have to learn to write big and then scale down to write small. So, and, so that this, sort of, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, no, I was just gonna, this X height, is it one centimeter? It is one centimeter, yes. Thanks. So it's, and of course, you know, with, with my hold, so if I'm writing with my hold, I can do this, right? So that's one centimeter, that's one centimeter space. And you know, the other thing, we've left space between here because 
I want you to correct these. I want you to leave space. You know, people write right up against themselves. So you have no space for corrections. Now, so this is three centimeters, right? So it's 30 mil and I can do I can write a letter at 30 mil without having to lift my hand. Wow. And, and so the, the scope of dexterity is, is so much greater yeah. with this hold. And, you know, I, I have no tension in my hand. I have no pressure. I'm not suffering. You know, mm -hmm. you, you see people writing and they're holding the tool so tightly. You're sort of thinking, gosh, what did that tool do to you to deserve that? <laughs> 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 and and you know the, the the other thing that this does i was and i was looking at this recently um, i i've just started working on this i showed this to you before i just started working on this new mm. majuscule alphabet you know when you when you learn to control the tool at this you can then do Because you, you know how to write on these lines, you know, and, and I think it's really important, this, this thing, you know, I look at people practice and they're practicing and they're doing this and they are, because they are seeing this, right? That's not the 55. Mm. That's the line they're writing on, but they're not, they're not aware of the 55 being the line that they have to be on rather than being around on. And, and it's, it's a really important distinction. You know, it's, yes. and, and this, this also teaches you, you know, most people, I always talk about this. So, you know, people do this thing called a wiggle, right? They, cut, they do a P and then they do this, right? They set a wiggle down. Mm -hmm. But once you learn that you have to go up and over and around and down and under, then that's a P. Yeah. That, that's a wiggle. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you can use this in modern calligraphy, but but mm -hmm. that's not a copper plate P. Yeah. So understanding these little things, you know, this 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 movement of, of up and around. And, and look at look at the speed, right? Or, or rather, look at the pace. I don't like to use that word speed yes. because people think it's fast. So you look at it and you go up and press and release and up. And that's, that's the speed of the writing. So, you know, even though you're doing it with a, with a pencil, so I'm going to use a, um, a Derwent 6B. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I've sort of worn it away completely. Yeah. And of course, the next thing is, can you control the pencil to actually create variable pressure? So, you know, if you, if you can't control the pencil to make variable pressure, you, you can't do it with a pencil, but you're expecting to do it with a pen, right? You know, I, I get so excited when I'm talking about calligraphy. No. It's just like... <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just sitting here mesmerized watching and then also trying to like 
it's a secretly practice but i can't secretly do that while everybody's watching me <laughs> and you know the thing is there's there's so much to learn and 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 it's you know i, I I, I the reason why I'm so intent on these prerequisites is it's a structured approach. You know, I've done those five. Yeah. Next, I want to look at each tool. So I, I've oh, oh, I have to show you this. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I have to show you this, right? So yes. I've come up with this new structure for teaching the structure of, of how to approach writing. Okay. So right. So we have this. We have okay. a tool, right? Mm -hmm. The nib is the point of origin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for those of you who like Scott Stargate, you know, hey, I'm right there with you. <laughs> um, so the nib is the point of origin. So the, the nib is facing you, right? You can see the reservoir. Yeah. And I can see the underside of the nib. So I'm yeah. seeing the opposite side of what you're seeing. Yeah. The nib can move vertically. So this is the vertical pitch of the nib, right? Mm -hmm. If I tell you, I write with the vertical pitch at roughly 70 degrees. That's yeah. my vertical pitch. Yeah. The nib also has a horizontal tilt because it can tilt this way and that way. Yeah. So it can tilt to the left or to the right. Mm -hmm. Now, the small caps that I've been working on, yeah. I've loved these caps in maps in the 18th century, and they are a nightmare to do. <laughs> and one morning I was lying in bed at three o'clock in the morning and I could not sleep. And I'd been working on them the previous day. And so I sort of got out of bed and I came downstairs and I started working on them. And I started to think, if the, if the horizontal tilt changes, what happens? Mm. And just like that, the whole thing materialized. Oh, wow. <laughs> So, but then you, you also have to have, so you have vertical pitch, horizontal tilt, and uh, there's another one. Um, so is it that you're changing the tilt as you're riding or you're ch changing the tilt for the entirety of the script? Oh, so you, you set the tilt as you're riding. Gotcha, okay. And then you have um, vertical pitch. It's so new, I just came up with it. Horizontal tilt and axial roll. It so, just sounds like some kind of dance move. <laughs> so you, you have the point of origin, right? You can go this way or that way. You can go this way or that way. And you can also do this. So you actual rotation. So you can uh -huh. rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise. Right. And I said this, I was, I was like, tell me, tell me, look at this, listen to this. And tell me, yeah. I was like, oh my God. I know, what so? Because then you, you can teach people, you know, you don't say, oh, turn the pen, you know, like so, right? So take the, you know, you can, you can actually give a Cartesian coordinate system to our tool. How does the tool, you know, oh gosh, people are watching me going, oh my God, this guy needs to get out. <laughs> <laughs> he's been locked down too long and he's baked too much bread. <laughs> uh, eat, it's, it's the yeast, oh my gosh, it's just, it's just frothing in my brain. Who knows what we're all um, going to come out of this with, Paul, but all of the stuff that you've created for, for everyone is, is wonderful. Like, this is just a, a treasure trove. So the next set of prerequisites looks yeah. at each tool. So I'll start with the pencil, and I give all these exercises on how the pencil works. And here are exercises, and this is what you need to do. And next, I want to look at the pointed nib. You know, how does the nib work? Because... You know, like, remember, you know, we, you know, so, some of us were, were on a call a couple of days ago with, with Kate and, and Heather, and, you know, it's, yeah. everybody's like, what? <laughs> um, and we were talking about, you know, how to get a particular shape. And the shape was how to get the, uh, the, 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 the shade on a Spencerian letter. Heather, I love you too. I'm glad you got your letter. Um, and how? How do you get that, right? And Brian Walker told me, when you're writing, you have to press and lean to the right. Yeah. Now, I, it's really important. I tell people, it's important you use your head. Mm -hmm. Literally use your head. Yeah. So you're writing, 
and you lean to the right and you tilt and you lift and you pull and you come out and the shape does that yeah it does that beautiful that ending of the of but the... if nobody shows you how to do it no. and i've actually i've i've gone back to spencerian this week because of that conversation that we talked about and i've started to do um yeah lindsay says it was such a revelation she couldn't sleep that night <laughs> we're all just we're oh, all wait. up <laughs> the tilt <laughs> the horizontal tilt and, and so I, you know in my in my pointed nib prerequisite i look at I look at this this how do we how do we teach this information how do you pitch this and how do you how do you explain how that shape forms mm. and so it's there's there's so much that 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 we need to be aware of that a lot of people you know I watch them write and I'm like are you are, are you aware of what you're doing I always tell people film yourself writing set the camera up over there and people are like, oh i don't like to see myself on, on film like you're not looking at yourself and you're not posting it you know just just yeah. set it up over there and leave it running for half an hour and then go back and watch it and you you will be mortified at what you can see yeah, you know? you're sitting there you're sitting like this you're leaning over the desk your posture is terrible the page is all over the place and then you set it up to film your hand working yeah and then you start looking at this and you're like now, now I can see why I'm struggling. Mm. And so this, 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 we have to get people to, to be more conscious of, of, of their concerted practice, yeah. of, 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 um, of sort of be, really being brutal with yourself <clears throat> and being responsible for your own learning. You know, I watch people do pages of text and, there are no corrections, mm. none. And so you, you, you're, not, you're not actively learning. You're sort of passively learning. And you're only learning by brute force. So you're wasting paper, you're wasting ink, you're wasting nibs. When you could, you, you could, you, you could divide that by 10, you could learn so much faster if you were much more conscious of, of your accuracy, you know, going back to that question about the straight line. Yeah. Is the line touching the baseline and the X height? Because you watch people write and you're like, you, you completely missed the yeah. X height and you completely missed the baseline because you're not on it, you're under it. And I think but, when I came to see you last year, when you're developing the, developing the pads, which we may not have time to talk about now. We've got a couple more minutes left. I know, sorry. <laughs> no, no, don't be sorry. We've, you know, and there was another thing I wanted to talk, a question that had come through. So we'll just see how we go. But um, that you'd commented on on the pads themselves, on the, on the um, instructions to the pads that people needed to hit those, um, you know, the tops and bottoms to make sure that they were really getting the right shapes. So, you know, I know that's such an important thing that you want to get out to people um, to really focus your practice. So... Um, any word on the on the uh, on the pads and the production? I'm I'm I'm, I'm planning to send them an email tomorrow. Uh, okay. Because you know the 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 area that the the mill that makes yeah. these that, that are making this pad, that area is one of the worst hit areas in France. Mm -hmm. So um so I hope to hear from them. You know I'll I'll, I'll message yeah. them tomorrow and try and get some details. And, yeah. But, you so know, uh, Paul's just talking for those who don't know that he has um, designed with um, PA scribe rhodia pads, um, which is really? three writing pads. So I'm sure he's got something he can show us quickly, potentially. Um, oh, you know. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I won't do that though. Yes. And the grey one? Yay. With the grey line? Ooh. Beautiful. And the black one is somewhere up. That's fine. So it's a black one with black lines. And you said this was a really nice one because it's, you know, for people who want to take a nice picture on social, the lines actually fade away. Yeah, they disappear. Yeah. So ne next week, I'm going to start doing some posts because other people have sent products in. So like Kurtaki have sent products and uh, Molotov have sent some products and uh, Stadler and Royal Talon. So I'm going to 
work with the black work, work with the pads on these with these products and post them so people can start seeing how oh, yeah. the products work. Lovely, that's awesome. Um, I don't know how you have for time. Yep, go ahead. We can get this. <laughs> this is take three. Uh, better than in take five that I had the other night. So thank With you. With Chris, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but technically, we've, we've hit our hour. So I just wanted to come back and formally say thank you and, and goodbye. But not to keep everyone in suspense. The question that I was asking was, we had a question from Rachel, um, who considered calligraphy, who knows that you understand the art of calligraphy opening up the heart chakra. And I thought it was really interesting. I know people have been talked in the comments today about the science of calligraphy. And I thought maybe it'd be nice to end on something a little bit more wholesome or, you know, heart related. <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, I, one of the reasons that I was able to, thanks to the question, Rachel, that I was able to, to help save my thumb was because I, I went and I trained, I went, went and I studied Reiki. And I went on to, to training as a Reiki master, um, which... I, I was able to do a lot of practice on my hand, um, which really helped with the pain. Now, one of the things I noticed a long time ago, so you, you, did you ever go to Art in Action? No, I haven't. So Art in Action was this massive show of like 20,000 artists, just, you know, intense right. demonstrating and the public would come yeah. and we'd be there for four days and it was just, oh it was insane, you know. Um, and I would watch people watching me write. And I would see complete strangers. I would do something and people would just reach out and grab whoever's hand was closest to them. And they would just go, oh, wow. And I sort of thought, hmm, the work must be really good to get them to do that. <laughs> but I would watch people cry. And then other people would leave and those people who would cry, were crying would stay back and I'd, I'd sort of talk with them and ask them what was happening and, you know, have a little chat with them. And they would say things like, I could feel my heart just, um, just, just, just opening, just things that I've hidden for such a long time would, would, would come up. Memories that I, I things that I, I, I thought I'd, I'd forgotten about would just come up. Um, and so I started to, to, to think about this, you know, what, what's going on here? Um, and then, you know, you know, when you're in a classroom environment, teaching, mm. and you're dealing with your students, and you know, I'm, I'm very physical, you know, I love to touch my students, and I always have my hand on somebody's shoulder when I'm talking. Mm. What they don't realize is I'm resting my hand on their shoulder, because I'm actually actively doing Reiki with them. <laughs> because I know there's so much information that I give in my class that I want them to be energetically open so their minds can absorb as much information as possible. Mm. People leave the classes and they say, I've never, ever learned so much in my life. There's so much to remember. And, I, and mm. it's amazing that I can remember it. So I know that the Reiki works in this context. But I would see students, you know, being so affectionate and so and display such love in the class that, you know, when you're in a classroom and you're sharing calligraphy with other students, mm. you, you bond with them. Now, when you're sitting writing together, you are, you are, you are opening your mind to the universe. So I always tell people, the piece of non-writing in front of you, which is the page, it has no writing on it. There is a lot of writing on that page. 
Now you are going to take your terrible writing and put it on the non-writing and ruin the non-writing. <laughs> <laughs> but you sit on the cusp of this stack of quantum leaves. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you are relaxed enough and calm enough and at peace enough, you drop down through the quantum levels and the best writing is at the lowest level. We very rarely start down there. You know what they do in the, in, in the East? They always tell their students, smile. You watch Chinese calligraphers and Japanese calligraphers teach their students and they say, and smile. And they smile and they do their work. And you see Western calligraphers write and you're like this, you're like, I'm going to write this letter. I'm writing and don't interrupt me. And, and, and nobody's smiling, right? <laughs> and so you, you're so full of angst that you are, you are in the physical world, you, you're not even dropping down into the quantum levels because you're not relaxed. And as soon as you relax, the universe pours something into you that connects you to the page. Yeah. And so you're, and you're also letting the, 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 the page and the nib and the ink interact together. So I talk about this thing called, I developed this thing called the lift which is how I write so lightly. When, you're, when you use the lift, the page comes up to meet the nib on the upstroke because the nib is off the page. Mm. So the page comes up to meet the nib. The nib is skating on the page. And as you come down and you press, the nib takes the page. The nib goes down to meet the page. So this this sort of call and response, this, this interaction between the page and the nib is like, is like, is like the ocean. It's, it's like an ebb and a flow. And so, you know, I, I studied some craniosacral therapy and craniosacral therapy is based on this principle of ebb and flow. Huh. So the cerebrospinal fluid flows 50 cycles forward and 50 cycles back. So it takes 50 cycles to go down the spinal column and 50 cycles to go back up the spinal column and around the brain. So this, this call and response is, um, it's a very, very different experience when you're writing. Now my uncle, Uncle Stephen, was a healer in Trinidad. He was an amazing healer. My mother's, you, you can feel it. You can feel the energy flowing. Mm -hmm. So I started to realize that when I write, I could feel my heart just churning and heating up. And, mm -hmm. and it was like, I, I could feel the whole room. I could feel all the students. I could feel what they were frustrated with. I could go right up to them and just talk to them on such, such a pure conscious level that they would feel, they could feel my love for them. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I'm, I'm not just there to teach them about this thing on the page. I'm there to teach them how to connect to the universe. How to, and you know, from, a, from, a, from an archeological point of view, our cities wouldn't exist mm -hmm. if we didn't write. Mm -hmm. You know, we learned to write because we needed in Ur and Uruk in, in, in Mesopotamia, in you know, the Sumerians, yeah. they developed you know, cuneiform because that writing was necessary, it was essential to have that information recorded so that yeah. they could record how much food they had yeah and so writing is is intrinsically linked to the human consciousness mm -hmm. you know what is that actually yeah. our cities exist because we write and so if you have something that is so intrinsically linked to our genome and you are writing you know, how many times have you been writing and you just feel so emotional mm. and it's this flood of emotion and you're just you're just so overwhelmed and it's because the heart chakra is opening mm -hmm. and when the heart opens it does something that you don't like it to do <laughs> it's you know we have all these walls that we built and these walls that we built 
are built to to hide problems that we've had. You know, hurt. We've been hurt, so we build a wall. And when you start writing, the heart chakra breaks down the walls. <laughs> so you're writing and you're just like... <laughs> and it's, it's so cathartic. It's such an amazing experience. And, and it's, you know, there's so much that's possible with, 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 especially with calligraphers. You know, calligraphers can connect to the universe in a very special way because we have this direct path to our heart. Yeah. And it's, you know, and that, that's why I had those meditation lives. Yeah. Right. I'm up on YouTube. And, you know, I've had so many people say to me, <clears throat> I've watched the meditation and I could not believe how <clears throat> I felt. And I was so flooded with, with, with emotion and calmness and mm. peace. And, mm. and it's, you know, we, we have to learn to write deeper. You know, you watch people, I watch people write and you know, I, I feel, I'm talking, I feel like crying. And I watch people write and, and I despair because I'm watching them and I'm like, you know, you, you're not connecting to the writing. You're just slapping the ink on the page. And, mm. you know, meditation is about a process. You have to know how to, how to approach the meditation. You don't just sit down and you slouch in the chair and you yawn and you do whatever you're doing. You sit there, yeah. you start to breathe. And of course, you know, look at how I breathe. You know, I, I inhale on the upstroke, I exhale on the downstroke. And, and it's, it's all about peace. It's all about, it's, it's all about opening your feelings so that you can benefit from the writing. You know, the, the writing, you know, people say to me, oh, you know, I love calligraphy. And, and, um, and I always tell people, you know, you, you didn't choose calligraphy. Yeah. Calligraphy chose you. <laughs> you know, it chose you because you were ready for something on a deeper level. You know, don't shortchange yourself. Yeah. Really sort of, really let the practice connect with you. Really understand that, you know, the accuracy of the writing, really touching the baseline and the X height. You know, and notice, you know, I, I've completely changed the way I, I, I speak when I'm talking about this. Mm. But also I changed my terminology. You know, years ago, I used to say, hit the baseline and hit the X height. And I never say that anymore. I always say, you know, just touch the baseline, just touch the X height and, and just inhale and, and really just let the tools do the work because... You know, if you say uh, the speed of the writing, immediately you're thinking of galloping. Yeah. Or if you say um, hit the baseline and hit the X height, you, you, you're approaching it in such an aggressive manner that you will never get a beautiful letter mm. because you're, you're, not, you're not in the right frame of mind. You're not connecting to the writing in a gentler way, in a sort of, in a more loving way. Because it's more than just the mechanics it's of the writing. It's the mechanics of, of your breath. It's the mechanics of your heart. It's, and, it's, and of your thought. Yeah. You know, I, I could talk about this forever. And the, the problem is, you know, as I start talking about it, I start getting really emotional. I mean, I, I could feel my eyes just yeah. sort of, just there holding back because, yeah, yeah. you know, That's but, it. But we can't it's, be it's, you have to, you have to feel it and, yeah. And, you, you know, a lot of people fight it. I've watched people in class and I'm like, let go. You're in a safe space. Mm. You know, nobody's going to film you and post it on Instagram. Going, oh, look, look at so-and-so. She was writing and she's crying. You know, just let it, let it open your heart. Really let it, let, let it into your heart. And you, your writing instantly changes. You know, I always tell students, don't, don't do your homework, don't do your practice if you're angry. And you're like, oh, I have to, I, this is when I have the time, I'm going to write. Okay, so if, if you're upset and you use the writing to help you relax, then great. But if you sit down and you try to write angrily, the work, you'll, the work will be terrible, mm -hmm. absolutely terrible work. And you'll come away feeling even worse. Spend the time doing the writing Spend the time that you're angry correcting the work that you've done the night before. Yeah. So you, you actually, 
you know, you, you can't practice every night. You can't write every night mm. because you're, you're wasting time. What you need to do is you need to practice one night and you need to correct the next night. Sit with the writing. And when, when you've left it and you come back to it and you look at it, you'll be like, what, what was I thinking? Yeah, yeah. Because you, you, know, you have to correct that work and you have to look at it. And, you know, I'm, you know I did a post on, on Instagram because you know, my, my grandmom died and there's yeah. all this fallout from the death of somebody and all this hassle. And I've, you know, I've, I've, I've been sort of trying to deal with, you know, family issues. Mm. And I thought, you know, I'm not being creative. It's really affecting me, you know, just the family. Mm. So I'm going to help people. So post something, tag me in it, say what you're struggling with. And I will, I will come and I will look at the work and I will, I will help you. Mm. Because, you know, I, I, I don't have to produce content all the time but I can help. Yeah. I can go in and I can look at your work and I can say, try this, try this, try this, try this. And look at, and, you know, and it's, and I've been doing that for the last couple of days and it's been really amazing, you know, helping people is such yeah. a joy. It's just, yeah. it, it, it brings so much love to you and, and you, 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 and you send it back out there to everybody else. And it's, 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 it's really important that, that we help. Yeah. Um, oh gosh, I'm just waffling on. <laughs> that's, no, that's a lovely me and that's a lovely message to end on. I think we will end it there because you've just said some really beautiful things, and I think everyone really appreciates that. We've got people just waking up in Australia at six thirty. There's people oh. at two a.m. We're really thankful that everyone joined us. It's been a really, really lovely live. Thank you, Paul, as always. Oh, Kate, thank you so much. It's, it's so lovely to see you and you. And we'll see you again soon. Okay, bye, bye. everyone. Have bye, a good Mary. evening. Have a good morning. <laughs>